We woke up this morning to a completely different Japan, for we have arrived in Kyoto. Used to be the capital city, in fact the name even says capital city, but it obviously is no longer. During the Edo period, this is where history was kind of came about in Japan, but already it's so different to the brashness and the brightness of Tokyo. This is gentle and there is classical music being piped out of department stores as we walk past. This is going to be a very different experience of Japan. The Kinkakuji Temple outside Kyoto is known as the Golden Pavilion for obvious reasons. It's been restored several times, but all of that is made out of real gold leaf. But what interests me is the backstory. Maybe it's because we are the geriatrics, but this was built by a shogun back in the 14th century. It's his retirement villa. There was an entire complex in its time, and he brought his family and his clan, retired here, and eventually died in 1408, and then eventually became what it is today, which is a Zen Buddhist temple. But having said that, I'm still hoping that Billy's going to catch a hint because this I could retire into. I have to observe, this is the first time we've actually run into this level of activity. It seems to be everybody's out of school visiting the temple day or something. Normally, we're a bit more out of season. Not today. We're learning to take the rough with the smooth, and we've just come through a few days where breakfast was sitting cross-legged on a bed with bits and bobs that we'd bought from 7-Eleven. And I guess now we're in for the smooth, because we're in Kyoto, at the extraordinary hotel, uh, the Grand Bach Hotel. <laughs> this is what they bring us for breakfast. We've each got like a three-tiered affair of breakfast wonders. We're given a choice every morning between a Western and Eastern breakfast. And this morning we're going for an Eastern set, which is a bit brave first thing in the morning. But just look at how they present this like a magic box. Ta -da. <laughs> That's breakfast. Don't know yet what everything is. I'm, I love sushi and sashimi, but how I feel about it first thing in the morning, I don't know. But look, it's absolutely incredible. We were walking towards what we know is the oldest streets in Kyoto. We, we, we're heading in that direction to find something to eat. But as we came past the alleyway, we saw that. And then we just had to scream up and have a look at it. That is the Yasuka Pagoda. It is Buddhist, but importantly, it's part of a temple that dates properly back to the 6th century. So we're finding in Kyoto a lot of the original buildings. And I don't think they get much older than 6th century. This is Higashiyama. It's one of those places you have to go to when you're in Kyoto. And the whole area of about three, four, five, six streets is preserved feudal Japan as it used to be. All these little wooden places were either tea houses or special places to eat and live. Still are in many cases. So it's not Disney does feudal. It's real. It's the real McCoy and it's sunset in Kyoto and what a place to be. I had no idea Higashiyama was so big. I thought it was going to be one little street, but we walked and we walked and we walked. And at the back and at the top of all these streets, we come across yet another one of the amazing shrines. And there are thousands of them in Kyoto, but this one, quite exquisite.
It's a form of asking for blessings. You throw the coin in and then you ring the bell with as much noise as you can muster. This is something of a pilgrimage for people from all over the world, but particularly in Japan itself. For we at the Fushimi Inira Shrine, just outside Kyoto. It is a Shinto temple, absolutely beautiful, because there are 10,000 of these Tori gates that form a tunnel all the way up the Inari mountain. So special that in fact it is a world heritage site. Well, we are still in Kyoto, and we have the absolute privilege and joy of spending a couple hours with this gentleman, Peter McIntosh, who is, amongst other things, a tour guide, but he's known for a particular knowledge of geishas. He was um, what a consultant on the movie Memoirs of a Geisha. Yeah, I have a location scout team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay and has lived here for 30 years. 30 years. And apparently, this is Peter's name in the area that we're in right now. Tell us about it. Yes, we're in the Gion Shinbashi area, or the Shirakawa area, which is probably the one, one of the most photographed or videoed spots in uh, Kyoto. And most movies, Japanese and foreign documentaries or travel shows, do something in this area. And if you donate money to the, the shrine over here, you can get a fence post with your name on it. This is Pita. This is my name written in Japanese, kind of camouflage, so they, no one knows it's me, so they don't, you know, uh, they don't ruin it. And this is my singing name. I study kota, the traditional Japanese ballads, and this is a style of singing, Yanagi style, and my my teacher's name, and then um, maple leaf. So happy maple leaf. Happy maple leaf. Happy, happy I maple like leaf. that. I'm a happy maple leaf. For a Canadian man living in in Japan, I like that. So we're on our way to go and find out more about the history and the culture of geisha. So this is just the beginning. And hopefully we'll see some along the way. <laughs> That'd be amazing. So this is the schedule board that tells you what the geisha actually study at geisha school. So you have flower arrangement, tea ceremony, the shamisen, the three string instrument. Here you have the drumming, the shoulder drum, the side drum, and the stick drum. Flute, bamboo flute, singing, different styles of singing. And this is dance, name of the teachers. Sensei means teacher, or literal translation, born before. And these are the days they have the, of the month they have their lessons. The Rashiyama Bamboo Grove is something that's part of history and superstition because there are so many stories that abound about what takes place in this grove. Its name is the Whispering Bamboo Grove. You can see why. We just trekked our way right up a steep road that seemed to go on forever and ever and ever and ever. And we finally got to what is called the Kiyo Mizu Temple. It's one of the big ones to come and visit in all sorts of meanings of the word big one. But it looks like we are not the only tourists to think of this today. And this is autumn, so I can only imagine what this must have been like in peak season in summer. A lot of Kiyomisu has been renovated, as so many of the temples have been around Japan. I mean, they're made out of wood, so they've burnt down. There's part of this structure which dates right back to when it was first built, which is around about 789 AD. But there's an interesting Japanese saying about those, that wooden structure you see, which goes, 
if you throw yourself off the wooden stage of Kiyomisu, then you're prepared to throw yourself into the challenges of life itself. So we've left the madness of the madding crowd behind us and decided to walk out. And we're still in the grounds of the Kiyomizu temple, but we found along the path, walking to a smaller shrine, this incredible bamboo grove. Sometimes it pays just to keep walking. At the end of our walk, this is where we are, right on top of the mountain. And apparently it's a very special little shrine, for many poets lived here over the centuries and were inspired to write volumes of Japanese poetry. So we're pottering down alleyways and Vili's determined to find an authentic... Okay, he's chosen a little tiny neighborhood place. That doesn't even look like a door. Uh, and it looks to me like a sushi place. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Here it is, all laid out, a complete meal. That is fresh Japanese sushi. Sometimes it pays not to be too rigid or too organized in your life in Japan. And there are so many sayings that you live your life as the wind blows you. Well, as it turns out, the rain blew us. We were on a Sunday walk, as one does in Kyoto, our last day, and we followed the sounds of music and blundered into this park outside the museum where there's some sort of a, I imagine, inter-school dance competition going on. Never seen such vibrancy, never known such joy like we've just been watching on stage behind us. Wonderful. And none of it was planned. We just went with the flow. <laughs> This ramen is probably the best ramen I've ever eaten, so they claim number one in Kyoto, number one in the world. I get that. Absolutely superb. Well worth two hours in the cold, wet queue just to get into this teeny tiny little restaurant. And we've just counted, and there are 12 people in total eating in this restaurant and there's probably about 45 people outside waiting to come in, hence the two-hour wait. Ginkakuji Temple is better known as the Silver Temple but at the time it was built in 1489 and it was supposed to be modeled on the glorious temple of all which is the Golden Temple except this one intended to be the Silver Temple never quite got as far as having its silver cladding but Brown wood though it be, it's still called the Silver Temple. As you might have noticed, the seasons are finally changing for us, but we had to do the Philosopher's Walk. It's one of those places, particularly in cherry blossom season, where everybody comes. Well, it's autumn, it's wet and drippy, and it's been named after a professor uh, who was a philosophy lecturer at the university. And mm, maybe that's why I had to come, you know, just to say this is one for my own philosophy father, but it's the most prettiest of walks, even in the rain. Right alongside the Philosopher's Walk, tucked in away from the rain and the cold, we found this amazing coffee shop. There's the walk, and it's very cosy inside here, I must tell you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we cannot come all the way to Kyoto 
and not to do a proper formal tea ceremony. So mm -hmm. I'm delighted to introduce you to our teacher and our hostess. Yes, thank you. So my name is Miyako. Okay, so I started learning the way of tea. So it's first time, so tea teacher is so strict. So it's so hard. So one month, for one month, only just open and close the sliding door. So we've just completed the formal part of the ceremony with Miyako yes. and it's very much more specific than I had anticipated. Every movement of the wrist, even how you whisk your matcha tea, exactly how much to put on your spoon. You can see why it's beyond drinking tea. This is a ceremony that involves every part of your being. It's lovely. It's quite something to experience.